I've been an amateur beekeeper for 40 some years and uh, one of my fellow neighbors who is a scientist here at the university introduced me to Gene Robinson. My name is Gene Robinson. I'm the director of the Institute for Genomic Biology and the director of the Bee Research Facility. I explained, well, I'm a beekeeper. I was trained as a geneticist and I'm quite good at computers. So uh, he invited me to work at the lab and I chose this project to try to put tags on bees and track them along. A radio frequency ID tags are very tiny. They're so tiny we can place them on the backs of bees. When the bee passes through a recorder, it can get the unique number that's in that tag. What I did was uh, worked out a system to put tags on bees and then keep track of them for the next six, eight, ten weeks as they went about their business. He brought an engineer's perfectionism uh, to this project. The technology had to be working at the very highest level. Every aspect of the technology was tested and retested. The first thing we do is anesthetize the bee by putting it on a plate of tin foil right over ice. And that keeps it cold and anesthetized for about the two, three minutes needed to tag the bees. And this then collected data every time the bee passed under a recorder. And this would tell us the direction, whether the bee was going out or in. Well, early on, I, I would notice that some bees were much more active than other bees. So honeybees are foragers. They collect nectar and pollen. They make a living exclusively on flowers. It's very difficult to make a living as a forager, relying solely on flowers. There's a group of dedicated bees, the foragers, that work all the time, all day, so we thought, to collect these resources. In fact, our calculations showed that 20% of the foragers are accounting for over 50% of all the foraging activity. We wanted to see what would happen to the colony when we removed those bees that were foraging at a much higher level of activity and then we got a big surprise. Other bees upped their game considerably and started acting in the way that we would have described for the elite bees. Well, the first thing we learned then is that the elite bees are not the only ones capable of doing this. With the old timers in beekeeping, there's, there's something called the wisdom of the hive when you can't really explain what's going on, but the hive does something super, what to lo looks like intelligent. We call it a, the wisdom of the hive has uh, responded with making new elite bees as needed. One could imagine that this would make sense for the life of the colony because we know that the harder that a bee forages, the harder it works at foraging, the sooner it will die. So at the colony level, perhaps there is something that's uh, useful or adaptive in having some individuals working really, really hard and we expect therefore dying sooner and some that are able to partake in the foraging activities but not forage so hard as to die so early. That's purely speculation. It's based on the idea that when we removed the elites, the colony grew them back as it were. They, there were bees that replaced them and that's a striking phenomenon.